Hi, this is Larry Benko, W0QE, and in case you didn't read the title of this video, there was a new version release of SimSmith. Let's look at what effect this new version might have on you. There's one particular downside of the new version 16.1, and that is that there's a new file format, .ssx, which stands for SimSmith, I believe, extended. And version 16.1 reads the old SS file format and the new SSX file format, but it only writes the new SSX format. It does read the old format quite well, and I've tested it with a huge number of files that I have, with all of them either working without any warnings or exceptions or anything, or with um, a menu that comes up and says, do you want me to convert a couple things for you uh, for, in ruse blocks? And only one or two files that I have to actually do any real editing to make work. So that's really a good thing. However, if you share files with another person and, they're, and they are not aware of the new version and you send them SSX format uh, suffix files, they will not be able to read them. So there is a downside here that you both need to be um, on the same page, so to speak. Also, this puts me in a bit, of, a bit of an issue. What do I do with new videos? I've decided, and I think rightfully so, that new videos will use version 16.1. So all downloadable files now that I um, make available will be in the .sx, .ssx format. And I think this is a little bit painful, maybe initially, but it will encourage people to, um, to upgrade. Remember, SimSmith is a free program, and the cost of up upgrade is absolutely zero, so there's no reason not to do it. I've been uh, beta testing version 16 for a couple months now, and there, in some ways it's actually better than any of the previous versions because it's probably been more tested. And th a few things have been found that existed in older versions. So um, it's good in that respect. It's just the downside if you share stuff, and that's to me the, um, the biggest issue. So instead of running off right now and upgrading it, Think about that for a moment before you do it. Um, there are ways around this, of course, but just be careful. And we're going to assume right now the new features outweigh the downside. The downside really isn't that big. Can we use multiple versions of SimSmith together? And the answer to that is obviously we can. However, you have to install them a little bit uh, carefully. I mean, I can, I can right now bring up uh, version... There, there's the new version, 16.1z. And there's 15.1i, and they're and they're both and they're both running running at the same time. So obviously you can run them both at the same time without a problem. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue with the file associations if you double click on the file if you have two versions um, both both installed. We'll talk about that in a minute. So how to install? Well, you go to the. I shouldn't have uh, deleted this file here. You go to the help menu and, and, and you say visit the website. Unfortunately, it popped up on a different screen. Okay, so here's the website. And it's the same website as it always has been. You scroll down here and version 16.1 is available right here. And Ward has already done a video on his YouTube channel about the new version. This video, and he's aware I'm doing it, is just a slightly different point of view. Um, I intend to stress a few different points that uh, he didn't, and I'm sure he, um, you know, it, it, it's nice to see two, two opinions on stuff a lot of times. So nevertheless, uh, we can go right here, and here are the possible things to download. The PDFs you get automatically when you download the executable files, but we have a, we have a, we have a, um, a file we can download for, for the Mac, we have one we can download for Linux or Unix, and we have two for Windows, one for a 32-bit version of Windows and one for the 64-bit version of Windows. And then we also have the naked jar file. And the naked jar file can run just fine, uh, provided that you have the Java runtime environment already installed on your machine. This is how I typically use SimSmith, and it's because I get a lot of updates, and the updates are available a lot of times just in the jar format uh, in the past. So they, they all work um, just fine. If you download 
the new and the only the only experience I have with uh, updating any of these right now is in Windows. I've never used SimSmith on a Linux machine, and I've only used it on a Mac machine maybe oh, half a dozen times, and those are at other people's uh, houses. So if we um, let me close these off now. So we we're, we kind of get to the point where we're, we have to decide whether we want to use single or multiple instances of the file of, of SimSmith. If you run SimSmith in a mode where you have enough monitor space, such as multiple monitors, having more instances of SimSmith run at the same time can be very interesting a lot of times and very useful. I wasn't aware until recently, and it was kind of embarrassing, but I wasn't aware that the Mac stops you from doing that unless you use the jar for uh, the, the jar method of uh, running SimSmith. So, you know, th these are some decisions you have to make. What I would caution you to doing is if you do the Windows version and you want to keep version 15, be careful. It will try to put when it will try to install it to a place called program files slash SimSmith. So if you want to have both versions in six, 15 and 16 up at the same time, and 15's already installed in that location, uh, just change the name where it installs it. Say, make, put it in program files, SimSmith uh, v16, and you'll be able to run them both. However, as you install version 16, you will be asked the question, do you want to associate both SS and SSX files with version 16 or not? Well, clearly version 16 should have SSX files um, associated with it, but there you can decide on whether 15 or 16 is to, is to associate the, the suffix type. Now, none of this matters, of course, if you load the program first and then you do file load and you can load anything. But if you double click on the file itself to bring up the program, then the associations matter. And if you decide to run both of them for a little while because you're doing something with someone else, uh, then later on you can reload 16 again and this time say associate both or you can go into Windows and just change the association. Uh, that All that works, and none of this is a big deal. Now let's get down to something that Ward stressed in his video, and that was the fact that some of the videos I had done, the mouse scroll wheel stuff would be incorrect, and he's absolutely, he's absolutely correct about that. The um, Over time, one of the biggest issues he and I have had is the way we view which way the, the mouse wheel should work. And if you currently use SimSmith and do not use a scroll wheel, you're missing out. Um, I would suggest that uh, you really go get one. Uh, they're, they're pretty cheap, you know, $20 you can get a mouse with a scroll wheel on it, and that will really make SimSmith work nicely. Um, unfortunately, you have to take a little bit of time to set things up, and we'll, and we'll get into that in a minute here. And as is usual with SimSmith, all his preferences are saved in the file for the current version you're using, which will have a name like this, last SimSmith circuit, and then the version number .ssx now in this case. Now in, on, in my computer, uh, or in Windows computers, it's stored in your, in your um, username just under, whoops, just under the, um, there they are, directly under the, under the, under the username. And I was messing around with some old versions in the process of testing version 16, so that's why these files are available. I can delete them. You can delete them anytime you want. If you delete them when you bring up SimSmith, it'll tell you you couldn't find this last, this last SimSmith circuit file, and it, it will create a new one for you. However, if it creates a new one for you, it will be created with its preferences, and they may not be, be to your liking. So let's look, let's look and see what that means. All right, here we are with the new version of SimSmith. 16.1z is, is the re released version. And I have a file here that has just a capacitor in it, that's all. And we can go, like we always do, File Preferences. And these have changed. Not, a, not all of them, some of them have changed. But what I want to concentrate on is, is these three lines right here. They're similar, but yet different to what we used to see. Now... The first line up here says wheel gain, and it says P, S, H, V, and R. P stands for parameters, S stands for Smith chart, H stands for horizontal scale on the on a square chart, V stands for vertical square on the, vertical scale on the square chart, and R stands for ruse block. 
And these are zoom factors within those, um, for those particular items. Then we come down here to something that was we had before. It used to be ordered differently. It used to be ordered shift, none, control, and shift and control. Now it's none, shift, control, shift and control. And these are factors that apply to this zoom, to this zoom factor. So what that means is, now the negative sign means I do it differently than Ward does it. He has a negative factor when he does it differently than I do it or whatever. Um, but this can be plus or minus, and this controls the direction that your wheel moves to do a certain action. If I do nothing when I am on top of a parameter, and I'll show you this in a minute, I will get a 0.1 times 1. So I'll get a 10% change. If I hold the shift key down when I'm on a parameter and I move, the, I move one notch on the scroll wheel, I will get a 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1 or 0.01 or 1% change of that factor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's look at that for a moment. And these are the factors I have. These are not the factors it comes with. Do not think my factors are better than anything else. What I'd like you to do is draw your own conclusions. So let's look at the first one, the parameters. If I'm if in a if I'm in a parameter box here, and I take the scroll wheel and I move it say I push it away from me, would you expect that to make the value here larger or smaller? In my case, I like it to be larger. I, so since, since that's backwards to how it was coded, I have to put a negative number in there. And so you, before you do this, you should just mentally think, think to yourself, I'm going to move it now, which way do I want it to be? And, and most people will, will have one way or another that they like to do it. The ability to make SimSmith really sing, so to say, um, you know, and be very fluid to use, is to have the mouse um, go the right direction 99% of the time when you do it, when you do things. So I have my way of doing it. Ward does it differently. A third user does it probably differently than both of us. But this one right here is the parameters, and it's any parameter. They all they all work the same way. They will all go up when I move the mouse. When I move the mouse wheel away from me, they all go up in magnitude. And that's the first one. The second one is a Smith chart. I hope that everybody knows that this Smith chart can be, can be moved. By the way, if we go over here for a moment, preferences, the 0.9 is the minimum chart skill. So when we zoom in on a Smith chart, we zoom back out, 0.9 is the minimum. If I make a 0.1, the Smith chart goes all the way right to the edges a little bit more and, and kind of impinges on this a little bit. So 0.9 is where I leave it. If I wish to zoom in on the Smith chart and say I want to look at this point right here, I hold, put my mouse right there, assuming I'm, assuming I'm in this window, and I put my mouse right here and I start to zoom in. And it, and it keeps this point as this, at the center. It doesn't, doesn't change that point. How much should I move, number one, and which way should I go? So in this case... I want to make the Smith chart bigger when I move the mouse wheel away from me. So I push the mouse wheel one notch, it makes the, it makes the Smith chart bigger. By how much? It makes the Smith chart bigger by 30%. Now, maybe you want yours to be 10%. If you want yours to get smaller when you move the mouse wheel away, make this minus 0.1, say. And again, do this, spend 10 minutes with this and you, you'll be happier with, with the use of SimSmith. Likewise, for the vertical chart, what do we want to have happen when we're down here in the horizontal scale and I move the, and I move the mouse? What do we want to have happen in the vertical scale? So go over to the vertical scale here, and this is the pivot, pivot point because it's got the line below it. If I move the mouse wheel forward, do I want this, this range to get larger or smaller? I, in my case, I want it to get larger. I, I click on it. It's a larger range. It made the waveform smaller. Some people view it perhaps in the way they want the waveform to get bigger um, or, the, or, the, or the plot to get bigger. All these things are your preferences. That's why it's preferences. The, the final one, of course, is in the ruse block. And in the ruse block, it's the same, the same scheme. We now have zooming in there, uh, which is really nice. And again, it zooms about the point. So if I, if I zoom over here, I'm going to start moving this stuff over to the side. So I zoom here, and look how it moves it off the side. If I zoom it over here, it'll move it the other direction. But how much larger does it get each time I zoom? In my case, I made it be 
10% larger, 0.1. These things are things that you should set, set the, you know, the program up to the way you want to use it and, be, and, and you'll be much happier in the long run. Um, there's a lot of other parameters to set here. One of the big ones is the drag tune depth. Some people don't like drag tune depth to be more than one because it can get you in trouble sometimes. Never set it to three. Three is just a recipe for disaster. One or two or zero if you don't want anything to drag. Um, what else is a, a big one to change? Um, it's hard. It's hard to say. I mean, there's um, most of them are pretty pretty self-explanatory. Do you like a gray background? How how bright do you want the the chart and the uh, the legend and, and the lines to be on the chart? You know, play with these things. You you can't hurt anything to, by by playing with them. Your initial capacitor cue, your initial inductor cue, those kinds of things. Um, I had a guy the other day tell me why would I ever want to zoom in on a Smith chart? This is a capacitor with Q2000. Let me let me go right here and I'm going to zoom in on it. Notice how we're not on the line anymore. That is the resistive loss in that capacitor. If I make this capacitor be a Q of 1 million, look what happens. So there, there are times when you want to zoom in just to see things. And if I have to move the mouse wheel, roll it 30 times to get there versus roll it twice to get there or 10 times, those are things that are, are your, your preferences. All right, well, I guess I beat the preferences up to death. So let's now look at some of the new features that we see in SimSmith. And probably the most obvious thing you see when you first bring it up is this little arrow. And Ward mentioned this in his video too. And it's, this just makes, makes the block small, makes the block large. At one point in time, there was a discussion about trying to take the Smith chart and move it to another window. And I resisted that vehemently because I like to run multiple versions of SimSmith. And if I had detached windows of the Smith chart, I would think that would be incredibly hard to keep track of. However, a lot of people put a schematic here that's, that's pretty large. If I start making my schematic larger and larger, you have two choices after a little while. One is live with a Smith chart to get smaller and smaller, or you make the you know block the um, blocks in the uh, circuit smaller and smaller themselves. Pretty soon you can't read these um, because they're so small. If we make it, I mean this is two, four, six. This is seven, eight, eight blocks make up the schematic. It could easily be 10, 12, 14, 20, and if it gets to be a lot. This becomes small. That was part of the reason for the creation of things like the end block and the ruse block. The ruse block is, is a much more flexible thing in that it allows the circuit to be, you can have multiple nodes in a ruse block. And you can in, a, in an end block also. But um, the reason for doing these was to make this a uh, more complicated circuit that you could analyze and still not have the, um, you know, the window get, the, the, the size of your, um, circuit here get get large. So this is a nice this is a nice little touch. If these are if these are things I'm not going I'm not worrying about. They represent kind of fixed. Um, now they still work just like they worked before, and you can hover over them. And when you hover over them, you can you can you can see um, what the value is in case it's too small to, to see. Like that one's eight point one nine seven for the length of that piece of transmission line. But they still work. They're just kind of hidden. And you can leave, then you can make the ones that you want to use and, and play with a little bit larger. And you still are such that the Smith chart or the, or for that matter, the square chart can be large, which, which is really nice. So that's probably the, the first thing that anybody would see. And it really has very little impact. Another thing that's different, which you may not ever have noticed, but if I had if I had my um, normal settings for for moving this um, value, this parameter, and it was less than the amount of resolution. So in, in this case right now, I have my preferences set to be uh, four digits. Let's make them three. And if I I'm going to move the move the mouse wheel one 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 notch, that moved me up ten percent. 
I'm going to move it up. This moves me 1%. Control moves me a tenth of a percent or whatever. And this is a rounding thing. But Control and, and Shift move me an amount that won't show any digits on here. In the old program, nothing was actually changed because this was the actual value they were using. Uh, the, excuse me, the actual value the program was using. Here, if I scroll the wheel, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we, start, we then see it. We're only displaying this, but internally in SimSmith, there's a lot more accuracy being done. So, in this case, if I was to go to 50 here, I used to be able to do stuff like go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, and I'd come down, and I wouldn't end up on 50. I'd end up at 49.9 or something else. Now I end up where I where I started from. That's a little bit nice. I, I kind of like that, and I think it's a lot nicer for SimSmith to use the, the real numbers than what the displayed numbers are. And that allows me then to display fewer digits. Fewer digits allow the display to be to be larger. Larger display means it's more readable. All you know, those are all good things. Now there are Ward did a good job of explaining how the ruse, the new ruse block works, and how the how several of these blocks work in terms of being able to I can put something in here, and I, if I make it larger, it's larger. Now when I close this off and I go back to it again, it's still large. If I make it small, it's still large. And if it gets to be where I have too many lines in it, I'll have a scroll bar on the right-hand side. Um, errors appear up above here now. You can clear them. As you type stuff in, a lot of times you'll find out you, that the program will give you an error. Um, there's some fine-tuning that needs to be done or has been, has been done. Maybe there's a little bit more to do to get the errors to not pop up too quickly, but yet to be informative. They've been made a lot, a lot clearer. And um, there's a commit button now, which used to be done, which means save it. But you can just you can just wipe out the window, and um, when you start over, this this also committed the the, the changes, and all that's very nice. Uh, the drawing in here has changed a little bit with the mechanism for drawing lines, and again, I think um, I think Ward touched on that. But the beauty of this now is the ability to be able to. Now here's obviously a circuit that makes no sense. I've got a short across my inductor. But if I click on this wire here, click on this node, I can pick this node or this one. And then this one is the one that I can actually delete. Before, it was a little hard to pick which one you were deleting, so it made drawing the schematic a little more difficult. These are things that probably don't affect a lot of people, but they, uh, they're, re they're really nice little features. Um, there's been a huge improvement in the, sp in the speed of which you can sweep, uh, particularly for items in ruse blocks. And they're such now that on my machine, which is not exactly a super fast machine, setting this to be 100,000 and setting this to be 4K or, or, 5, or 8K or 6K, something like that, is not unreasonable. I hope everyone appreciates why we have the two values, and that is because if you sweep a couple things, let me um, oops I clicked the wrong one there I'll make these the sweep parameters 100 times 100 is 10,000 things to sweep at 10,000 things to sweep maximum if you have your preferences set to be 6,000, that's the maximum it'll sweep. So it'll scale down both of those numbers um, from 100 probably to about 77 or 78. So that 77 times 77 will be my 6,000. Um, but if I go here and I and I set this to be, what's, it's set to be 100,000, okay. If I set that to be a large number and I say do this, give me all the points. Look how fast that is. I mean, it's, it's been speeded up a ton. And hopefully um, that will encourage people to do more complicated circuits, which used to be a little bit slow at, uh, at simulating. Now, I don't know if this represents um, all the changes. It doesn't even come close. But there's one new block, 
and that's the daemon the daemon block the daemon blocks can sit now left of the load there's never been a block before that we could sit that we could put before the load and this block can have things in it that control values out here I think I did a video where I had gang capacitors and I had a and I'm, I'm not going to do all the work necessary to do this but I had like an end block or something here and then I wanted to change the load here and I wanted to change something out here and if you change if you change a value here and it goes to the left you used to be allowed to do that that would mean SimSmith, SimSmith when it executed would execute this this piece first with the old value then it would change the value when it got to here then it would change the values over here and it would execute these pieces and you would end up with something wrong so what i would end up having to do would be make a new block that i called a load block ignore this one and then this would was to the left of the quote load block and then i could put my circuit or whatever i wanted to in here well the daemon block now alleviates that completely i just you just put it put it right here you make all your changes and you label this something like uh, control or something like that that's a really nice feature it's also been put in for some other new features that are not not in the scope of this video this is already way too long hope people get an appreciation for some of the stuff that's changed have any questions let me know in the comments below the video um, if you have a problem importing any of the files please uh, please bring that up because I, I haven't seen any and I think things are pretty good. Thank you again. If you like the video, click like, please, and subscribe. Or if you know people who like this these type of topics, uh, please uh, you know point the channel to them. Thank you very much.